Well, people have gathered all across the country today in the tens of thousands to demand that Donald Trump show us just how badly he's ripping us all off to, to release his tax returns. But, you know, we are here to tell him that Donald Trump, if you don't have anything to hide, show us your tax returns. Right? But in fact, we know he does have something to hide. And we also know that it's not just him who has something to hide. The Institute for Taxation and Economic Policy found in 2015 that 73% of the Fortune 500 companies had offshore tax havens, which sheltered some $717 billion away from funding human need here in our country. Some of the top offenders were Apple, Citigroup, Nike, Pfizer, Pepsi, and Goldman Sachs. That's why we're out here today to say, tax the rich. You know, the eight richest people on the planet today have as much wealth as the bottom 3.5 billion people on the planet. That's an obscenity. And those numbers don't exist in parallel universes. It's not just that there happens to be some very rich people and there happens to be a whole lot of very poor people. It's that one is the consequence of the other. You cannot have untold obscene wealth without having untold obscene poverty in this country and around the world. That's why we're out here to say tax the rich. And the worst part of Donald Trump's approach to taxes aren't even the things that he's hidden from us. Right? The worst is his open budget proposal that says we should have 54 billion more dollars for the endless wars and the Pentagon machine and cut 9.3 billion from our public schools. That's his proposal. And then the airstrike in Syria that launched 59 missiles, right? We know that that those 59 missiles cost us $29 million, which actually is the amount of money we need to make up the budget gap here in the Seattle Public Schools, right? And so we're here today to say a war budget leaves all children behind. And I, I think we also have to be clear that economic inequality and institutional racism don't exa exist on separate tracks. They're not independent of each other. They reinforce each other. And racism is projected by the corporate media. It's projected by the politicians and the richest 1% in this country for a very specific reason. Because Trump and the rest of his cronies know that they have to divide us to conquer. And they come out and blame immigrants right, for unemployment in this country. They come out and they blame black people for, for crime and poverty in this country. Right, and they come out and they blame Muslims for having to shift billions of dollars from domestic spending into foreign policy into their endless wars, right? This, this is absolutely a society that's upside down and inside out and needs to be turned right side up. Right? It's, it's outrageous. We're told that the least powerful among us, the most oppressed in our society, are to blame for our situation. And that the millionaires and billionaires are just innocent bystanders in our society. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. That's why we're out here to say tax the rich today. And finally, finally, I want to say that it, we, can, we can talk about Donald Trump and, and the right-wing bigots and, and the southern states all day long, but we need to look at liberal Washington state. Because there is no state in the union that is guilt, more guilty of having a, a shocking and violent tax structure than Washington state. We have the most progressive tax system of all 50 states, and it's simply Robin Hood in reverse in our state. It's just stealing from the poor to give to the rich. And 
you know, there's been recent proposals from our mayor, from, from all the way on up to the state legislature that are more about regressive taxation um, and profiting off of the, all the hard work that you do. And I think the, Im the impact is just devastating for our infrastructure, for our health care, and for our education, right? And I think that the McCleary decision made that clear, that showed that the state legislature is in contempt of court for refusing to do its constitutional duty and fully fund education in our state. So I want to end on an idea. I want to end on an idea of what we can do to fix this problem. And years ago, I went down to the state capitol with some of my friends and the social equality educators, and we busted into the House Ways and Means Committee meeting where they were getting ready to cut billions from our health care and our education. And we read out the state constitution that says it's the paramount duty to fund education. We might check that room. And we actually said that we're at the scene of a crime. I even hung, held up some plastic handcuffs to make it a little uh, obvious and handed out some citizens arrest warrants. The officer didn't have my same interpretation of the law that day, and I was arrested for trying to fully fund education. Right? But what if we all went down there this legislative session and packed out the state legislature and told them to fully fund education, that this is a citizen's arrest, that we will hold you, we will uphold the law if the officers won't do it, and we will demand that the rich be taxed in this country, in this state, and this city, so that our kids can have the future they deserve in the classrooms across Seattle. Thank you all so much for coming out today. I'll be fighting with you to the end.